Are you driving like this, sitting on the side, using the engine tiller, like this guy? Does your neck and back ache after just a few minutes because you're twisting your body 90 degrees just to see forward? I know his does. You have a blind spot to one side, and with all the weight in the stern, it's slow, and it may be impossible to get up on a plane with a smaller motor. He has a six horse motor, and it won't get up on a plane with him sitting back there. With a tiller extension, he can move forward and get the boat up on a plane easily. But after about five minutes, he feels like his arm is gonna fall off. Let me show you how I transform the steering on my boat from this to this. I'm facing forward comfortably from the midsection of the boat. With my weight forward, I can get the boat up on a plane easily. And I did it without spending a lot of money. You can easily adapt this system for you and your boat. Hey, Jeff here from Nettle Reef. With DIY projects to solve common problems or just make life easy. And information about the tools, gear, and other stuff that are key to these projects. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. In this video, we'll design this steering system, build it, and take it out on the water for a test. You can find links below to the parts and materials that I used if you want to use the same stuff. At the end, I'll pass on lessons learned and my thoughts on what could be done better. That way you'll be one step ahead for your project. The overall objective is to move the primary or cruising steering system from here to here, where I can steer like this, comfortably facing forward and enjoying the view. The system must be easy to remove and install with a minimum of tools and spare parts and be compact and easy to stow. To control the throttle, I can easily reach back and use the tiller extension. The transmission's a little more of a reach, but easily done. One of the advantages of a small boat is that everything is within arm's reach. When docking or maneuvering in tight quarters, I want to move back here to be close to the engine controls. For that reason, the cruising steering system must be over there on the starboard side. To accomplish this, the design has three parts, a steering arm, a motor bracket, and a tie rod to connect the two. This design requires a pivot point for the steering arm that is approximately halfway between the driving position and the motor tiller. Most small inflatable boats will have an oar lock or a pin like this in a good spot. If your boat has hard gunnels, you may be able to easily install an oar lock pin like this. The steering arm pivots on the oar lock pin. It extends forward of the pin to a comfortable steering position and after the pin to a length that aligns with the forward end of the motor tiller. The motor bracket attaches to the motor and extends forward to approximately the length of the motor tiller. The tie rod links the steering arm to the motor bracket with tie rod ends. Tie rod ends will be a critical part. These are the tie rod ends that I'll use at each end of the tie rod. It's a quarter inch bore. Threaded section is a quarter by 28 thread, fine thread. The overall length is about an inch and three quarters. The length of the threaded section is about an inch. If you're not familiar with tie rod ends, this is how they work. The threaded end threads into the tie rod like so. I'll use a thin washer or nut to lock it down. The bore end will take anything that's a quarter inch diameter to attach to another moving part. On the steering arm side, I'm going to use a quarter inch wing bolt. On the motor bracket side, I'll use a quarter inch quick release clevis pin. This is steel and brass construction. I bought these off of Amazon. They are $8.50 for two of them. Stainless steel would be a better material, but it's a little more expensive. You can find stainless steel tie rod ends similar to these at Summit Racing or Speedway Motors. 
They're 12 to $14 each plus shipping. I opted to go with the steel and brass. The first part to make is the tie rod. With the motor centered, we'll make the tie rod length slightly longer than the center line of the tube. This will bring the steering arm end of the steering arm closer to the driving position, shortening the steering reach. I decided to make this out of PVC pipe. It's strong enough, lightweight, durable, and it's cheap. To attach the tie rod ends to the tie rod, we'll use threaded inserts. If you're not familiar with threaded inserts, they look like this. They're threaded on the outside like a wood screw, so they can be threaded into wood or other materials like PVC pipe. On the inside, they're threaded like a nut for a bolt, or in our case, a tie rod end. The threaded inserts must have a quarter by 28 inside thread to match the tie rod ends, not the more common quarter by 20 thread. My local hardware stores didn't stock quarter by 28 inserts. I bought them off of Amazon. They had a 10 pack for about 11 bucks. More than I need, but I'm sure I'll use them for something. We'll drill a 3 8 inch hole in the end caps and screw in the threaded inserts. Then attach the end caps to both ends of the pipe section with PVC glue. The tie rod ends will screw right into the threaded inserts like so. The tie rod came out really good. I'm pleased with this. Put a little nut here so that this can be adjusted to change the length a little bit and then the nut can be tightened so that it won't come loose. The next part to make is the steering arm. There are a lot of ways to make the steering arm. Many would be simpler and easier than how I chose to do it. I'll take you through how I did it and mention some other ways it could be done. I'm sure you'll have your own ideas and adaptations for you and your boat. For my boat, an Achilles LS4, the steering arm needs to be 37 inches long with the pivot point right in the middle. Steering arm can pretty much be made out of anything you can drill a hole in. A piece of wood, an old oar, a one and a quarter inch dowel would work very nicely. I chose to use a section from the paddle end of an old oar. I cut it to the right length to give me a 37 inch steering arm when it's attached to the handle. With this design, I remove the paddle end of the oar and replace it with a new section. I want to be able to easily take these two pieces apart with a minimum of tools and with a minimum of loose parts. To do that, I took a piece of PVC pipe, cut a section off and cut it the long way, put a threaded insert in. This one's quarter by 20, not quarter by 28. So I added some fiberglass epoxy resin to get this in there good and solid. I used some tape to make a little dam at each end as you see in this picture and then just filled epoxy in. Automotive Bondo would have been a quicker and easier solution. It applies like putty and dries really hard. I didn't have any Bondo right now, but I did have fiberglass epoxy resin, so I used what I had. How this will work is this will slide in here, line up with the hole, Put the tie rod in here, put a wing bolt through, and tighten it up. There we have it. Works quick on and quick off just by taking out the bolt. Problem with that is that this will slide out. Could get lost, could go overboard. Who needs that? So to solve that problem, I'll take some Gorilla Glue. Put it on the top of this, put it in here, use a wing bolt to tighten it up, let the glue cure. After the glue cures, I'm going to take this foam insulation stuff and get this at Lowe's, Home Depot, any hardware store, and I'll fill this area of the tube. That will further hold this up inside here and keep it aligned. They also have the additional benefit of allowing this to float. If I ever lose it overboard, not that I'd do that. The foam is sat overnight. First, we'll just take this out. I'm 
Okay, that came out well. The threaded insert is well embedded. It's not going anywhere. And I'll bet it'll float. We'll do a float test in a minute. Let's just do a test fit to see how this works. Okay, that can easily move like that, just like it's supposed to. So now I can easily remove these two pieces with no tools and one loose part. Normally I wouldn't take these apart on the water. If I did, there would be a risk of losing the T-bolt overboard. I can always carry an extra bolt. Alright, now for the float test. First we will test the tiller piece. That floats very well. Lots of buoyancy there. No problem. Since we're doing this, we'll test the tie rod. See if that floats. It does float. Okay, good news. The final part to make is the motor bracket. I made it out of a scrap of half inch plywood. My motor has two holes in the carry handle. I drilled a couple holes in the wood that lined up with holes that were in the handle of the motor. I just bolted it through. Its shape is such that the tie rod end is slightly off axis from the center line of the boat and closer to the steering arm side. This allows for a little wider engine rotation when turning to starboard. Also, if you're tying up to a dock or another boat to starboard, the motor end of the tie rod needs to be able to quickly disconnect from the motor bracket. This is because the steering arm will extend outside the boat and could hit the dock or hit another boat. Definitely something to avoid. To do this, I attach 1 8 by 1 inch aluminum strips on the top and bottom of the motor bracket with holes for the clevis pin to go through. The pin goes through the bore of the tie rod end in between the aluminum strips like so. This is how it works. This is the steering arm. When it turns, it works like this and turns the motor. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I tidied up the motor bracket, sanded it a little bit, put about three coats of spray paint on it. Didn't go crazy. I'm a big fan of spray paint. Right, we've got the uh, T-nuts here in the back. So that when we bolt it to the motor, it's one less set of nuts we need. Fewer loose parts. I put a little lanyard on here. So we take the pin out. If I don't want to put it back in, I'm in a hurry, I can just drop it. And it won't get lost. There we have it. Let's go try it out on the water. I wasn't sure if this would really work. But as you can see, it works great. It's awesome. Coming up next, lessons learned. I've been using this steering system for a few months and have been out on the water quite a few times. There really are three lessons learned. The clevis pin that connects the tie rod rattles. There's an easy fix for that. The tie rod ends need to be greased. And the PVC steering arm construction could be made easier. With the motor running, there was a lot of rattling at this connection. This pin rattled. And this rattled. It was driving me crazy. To solve this problem, I use four rubber washers. They're one inch OD, one eighth inch thick, and have a quarter inch hole in the middle. I bought them off Amazon. I put them above and below each of the aluminum strips, sandwiching the tie rod end. It's a little fussy to get it all lined up, but no big deal. With the addition of these washers, there's no rattling. The steel and brass tie rod ends will corrode. You can see there's some corrosion on this. But the working part of it's just fine. It swivels perfectly. If we put something in there, you can see it's, it works great. 
I check them frequently, and when they get a little sticky, I give them a little grease. I use winch grease just because it's what I have, but any old grease will do. Just put a little dab in there, squish it around, move this thing around a little bit, and it'll be good. I'm very pleased with the way the PVC tie rod came out. But screwing the threaded inserts into the PVC end cap was more challenging than I expected. The inserts are designed for wood and the PVC is a much harder material. If I were to do this again, I would heat the end cap up in boiling water to soften it up before I screwed the threaded insert in. Or I'd just make the tie rod out of wood or another material. This project is a success. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please give it a like and subscribe.